so I am going to show you a full routine that starts from the very beginning, warming up the body, doing some mild posture release, going through a dynamic warm up, all the way through the workout and into the stretching at the end. So every one of those elements is just as important as the other. We all really focus on what am I doing for the actual workout? If you just focus on that, you're missing a big part of your actual workout. So preparing the body, and then of course afterwards, letting your body know that you're done and it's time to relax is super important. So I've got a little spiky ball here. It's a little orange guy that's got some give to it. I'm gonna roll out my feet. So I'm gonna start with that. So if you have a spiky ball, you can go ahead and join me. If you have another kind of a ball, that works as well. I'm just going to spread my toes and I'm going to lean in and out. So again, if you don't have a spiky ball, something with a little give is preferable. So a uh, yoga tuna ball, I think even a tennis ball will work, but I really like something with a little bit more give if possible. And I'm grabbing the ball with my toes and then kind of releasing. So a little contract and release as I go. And then letting, again, the little spiky ball, letting the little spikes go in between my toes. That won't work with a regular ball or a yoga tune-up ball, but you're still massaging out that tissue. Now, the reason we want to release and or wake up the feet is because if the feet are not working for you, the whole system will not work for you as well. So if you've got any issues with your feet, this is super beneficial. Notice I'm moving to the arch of my foot. And then I'm moving to the inside and the outside of the arch of my foot. Now you could spend five or more minutes doing this, but even a minute or so on each foot would be really beneficial. So when you wake up the feet, release the feet, it affects the whole system. So it will help your knees, it will help your hips, it will help the back will help with stability, so if you're doing anything that requires balance, that will be anything standing up, it will actually benefit all of that. And you can just see I'm rolling all parts of my feet, coming even to the fat pad in the very back of my heel. And one of the things the feet rolling will do is if you have any pelvic floor or lumbar, lower back issues, it will address these. There's a direct nerve connection from the bottom of your feet to these areas. Also, your psoas, your hip flexors, super connected to the bottom of your feet. So if anybody's ever told you you have hip flexors that are either tight or maybe not functioning to their ideal ability, you might want to think about rolling your feet in addition to addressing the actual hip flexors. All right, so I'm going to switch to my other foot, starting with the toes. So I'm leaning in and out to actually get a little stretch on those toes. And I might even like grab the ball with my toes, almost like making a fist over the ball and then releasing. So everything is connected. You'll hear me say that over and over in any of my myofascial release classes or workshops. It's getting the inner arch, the middle of the arch, the outer part of the arch here. So the, it's a continuous system. So if you have anything going on in the feet, it's going to affect the rest of the body. Like I said, it starts from the floor up. But if you have something going on, let's just say in the quadricep, let's say you've got really knotted up something in your quad, you have an injury or scar tissue, it's going to affect you above and below that. It's going to affect you laterally, medially. So in and out. So just think about that when you have an injury or you've had a surgery, the scar tissue, that tissue tightens down and it pulls on everything above it, below it, around it. So sometimes when we have issues down the way, whether it be higher or lower, we might want to think about where am I actually needing to roll out, stretch out, roll out, wake up, release, above, below, 
Now, that's why I'd recommend, you know, every now and again doing a full body from head to toe myofascial release session. Once a week would be great, but do it when you can. All right, so I am just about evened out on my feet. So I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna grab my yoga tune-up balls now. So you can release your glutes with ball or thumb roller. I'm just choosing a ball today. And so I'm gonna go ahead and sit on this guy. Now that is too much. You'll lay all the way down. Of course, that reduces the amount of pressure on the ball. But I'll actually stay down here for now. And you can kind of just clamshell out the legs. So right now it's underneath my right glute. And I'm doing a little bit of a clamshell type maneuver with this right leg. And then I can do some side to side. And again, I might sit up if that's not enough for me. And if it's too much, you can certainly take this to the wall. So why am I releasing my glutes? So if I only am choosing a handful of things to do my alfalfa release on, I'm going to pick the most important, or maybe the ones that are bothering me. So if I had, you know, tension in my quads, the front of my thighs, or if I had tension in my calves, of course I'd address that. But if there's nothing specific and I just wanted to make sure my body was ready for my workout, I would definitely do the feet, first and foremost. I would absolutely do my glutes, and I mean like the whole glutes, gluteus medius, gluteus maximus, gluteus minimus, the whole thing. And that means the big part, the sides, all of that. And that's because your glutes are your powerhouse. They're the one that's going to give you power when you're doing any of your lunging, squatting, running, cycling, any of that. So if you want some power and stability, definitely get those glutes ready to work. Let's get the other side, so I'm on my left side now. And then just, you know, be really conscious. One side's probably going to feel different than the other side. So maybe on that second side, you're like, yep, I need to lay down. That's too much. <clears throat> so you'll know it's too much. By checking in, you cannot take a deep breath. It is too much. If there's sharp shooting pain or numbness, it's too much or you need to move it a little bit away from that specific location. So sometimes that just means move it up or down or left or right. Alright, so I'm just going to choose those two today to show you. Now, of course, there's the whole rest of my body. The other one I highly recommend is getting some, uh, one of the Pilates balls. In fact, I will go ahead and show you that. Just kidding, see, I'm gonna show you one more. I said that was all I was gonna show you, but I'm gonna show you another one. So, Pilates ball. So this is a little bit squishy, and it's gonna go right on my belly. Now, why am I gonna do this? Because my belly region contains my hip flexors, so right here, super important, if those are not functioning for me, again, I'm going to have some issues and or lower back pain. So I'm going to lay on this guy right on my belly. And first, I'm just going to breathe. And the other thing that happens here is this is, of course, where all my organs are. So I'm going to keep those functioning properly. It's also where my lymph, most of my lymph, Lives. So my lymph system is what keeps me healthy if I thought disease. The last thing, let me move side to side here. Last, but actually most important is the fact that right in here, this is the bottom of my diaphragm that I'm pressing into. The diaphragm is my respiratory muscle. So do I want to be able to work? my breath while I'm doing my exercise very comfortably? Absolutely. So, the many, many reasons to get the belly region, the gut, I'm gonna make some circles here, ready to work. So there you have feet, glutes, and the gut region would be the ones I would recommend 
the most if you're going to choose just three. Of course, I've got lots of videos that show lots of other things that you can do. And if you have more time, you can do more things. I'm going to go ahead and put on my shoes now. And we're going to go ahead and start doing our dynamic warm-up. So your whole entire workout might take an hour, but your warm-up with the ball and your dynamic warm-up might be 10, 15, or maybe even 20 minutes of your full hour workout. So the actual bulk of the workout, the hard stuff, the lifting, the pushing, the pulling, the squatting, the crunching, whatever it is, that may only be 30 or 40 maybe minutes of your entire workout. All right, so our dynamic workout, we wanna make sure the whole body is warmed up and ready to work in the ways that we'll be working with the weights. So just walking on a treadmill, yes, warms the body, but does not prepare the body to do the workout that we're gonna be doing here today. So let's start with some squats. So we'll go hands behind the head and squatting down. I've got my hands behind my head so that I can remember to A, keep my chest lifting. It also gives me a little stretch across my chest and shoulders. I'm sitting way back in my heels. So I'm sticking my butt way out behind me. And depending on you, you might need to do 20 of these. So kind of listening to your body as we do this warm up. Are my knees kind of stiff this morning? If they are, I might need to do more reps. All right, so elbows in and out, chest and shoulders, waking up. And if anything I'm showing you doesn't feel good, hurts your knees, hurts your shoulders, just back it off. You know what's best for you. Never pushing through anything sharp. Alright, so we're going to do some knee drives. Now these can be done across the floor. They could be also done in place. And then we'll do some up and around. So waking up the hips, we take the knee up and around, up and around. Inside of the hip warming up. So I'm doing some external rotation of the hip now. But we also want to do some internal rotation. So I'm just going to go up and then go back and forth. So I'm just going to do one leg. Otherwise it gets really weird. <laughs> so it's like I'm stepping up and over something. Moving from inside this hip joint. And then let's do the other side. Up and over. Up and over. All right, let's do some arm circles and the shoulders. Inside of the shoulder starting to wake up. Let's go the other direction. And then let's swing the arms, chest again, chest and shoulders. Again, check in. If this does not feel okay in your shoulders, be careful. Maybe you take it a little slower, a little less momentum. Pass your hands behind you. We'll lift the palms if you can. We'll get a little stretch in the fingers and the wrists and drop the chin to the chest. So ear to shoulder, right your right shoulder, chin to chest. And then ear to shoulder, left side, and then chin to chest. We're going to send that going to the back and just really work through the front plane of this neck roll. Stretching chest and shoulders and neck all at the same time. And again, moving, so it's dynamic, that means with movement. So we do our isometric stretching after the workout. We do our dynamic stretching warming up before. All right, let's do some booty kickers. So if you're able to grab your foot, you can. If not, don't worry about it. And again, you can move with these. Or stay still. Your choice. You got the space. Maybe go ahead and move it. And let's 
take the feet wide and wake up the inner thigh, reaching side to side. And then toast, forward, and tap front, middle, back. Notice I'm keeping a little bend in my knees. That's important. We want this to be the hamstrings, not the low back. So bend your knees as much as it takes to keep this in the hamstrings and out of the low back. And then we're going to come into a bit of a lunge stride. So my left foot is forward, my right foot is back. I'll place my right hand on the ground and reach my left hand way up. Then I'm going to rotate and reach towards my back foot and then do it again. Reach, rotate down and around towards my back foot. So I'm waking up the middle back as well as my legs and arms. Just does a bit of everything. So reach and down and across. One more time. Reach. One more time. Down and across. And switch sides. And reach right hand up. And down and towards the back foot. And reach. Rotate from your middle back. Thoracic spine. And up. And reach. And up. And one last time. And up. And we'll do some pogo hops, ankles, calves, feet again, waking up, warming up. So, it's about 15 or so minutes in, and we haven't even technically started our workout. We've added a little water here, but now we are going to. So, generally speaking, a great format for a workout, a pushing exercise, a pulling exercise, a squatting type exercise, and a core type exercise. That's a great format. Some people include what we call a carry, um, and that could be carrying like dumbbells or kettlebells, um, but you can, you can throw that into the squatting category also, or interchange that. But a push, a pull, a squat, and a core. Great combination. So you can just set those up as sets. So I will show you what I mean by that. If that makes no sense at all, don't worry about it. I got you. So grab a little water for yourself. <clears throat> all right. So pulling, pushing, squatting, and a core. So we are going to do a pulling exercise. And it can be, you know, interchangeable. You don't have to do it in that order. I'm just saying definitely do all of those. So sometimes this needs to be a combined exercise. But right now I'm going to separate them out to make it really clear for you. So I'm going to do a pulling exercise here. So this is a row. So I'm pulling with my arms in a rowing fashion with these bands. So I'm in a little squat position and I'm going to pull. So we squeeze. Ten squeeze. So I'm keeping my chest lifted. My core is tight. I'm squeezing my shoulder blades. Now I could do these rows with my palms facing my body. I could do these rows with my palms facing down. I could do these rows with my palms facing up. So I'm going to either mix it up, or if one feels better in my body, like let's say my shoulder like it better one way or the other, I'm going to listen to that. I could also alternate if I wanted. Now, this is the part where I'm going to say we sometimes combine stuff. So I might row and rotate. Now my core is involved, and I could take it a step farther. But sometimes if you're short on time, combining stuff is the key. So if I took it a step farther, I could do a lunging type action at the same time. So this is a pulling exercise, a core exercise, and a squatting type, which is lunging type exercise. Go ahead and rest. All right, so I'm gonna do a pushing exercise now. So I'm gonna take these bands, and just a little bit lighter for these. 
You may not need to go lighter. Um, and this is a pushing exercise. So I'm doing a press. I'm moving a little forward with this band so it doesn't pull me over. Now, anytime I'm doing an upright exercise, I'm actually working my core anyway. So I can add things to make it more obvious that it's the core. Or I could add even some lunging type work here, and that will get the legs involved again, which again, squatting type exercise. So Squatting and lunging to me are the same category. So I can add that. Now, I could also add some rotation if I wanted to take a parallel stance here and add some rotation, kind of like punching. More could work. Okay, go ahead and rest. All right, so now I'm actually going to isolate specifically my leg. I'm going to go basic on this. We're going to go ahead and do a squat with, you can use a dumbbell or a kettlebell. If you don't have any weight, just use your own body weight. I'm going to hold this down low, the basic squat, toes are about hip width. So I'm sitting back in my heels and driving up, down and up. Way back in my heels, so my butt goes way back so I can try to catch a chair way back behind myself. Now, if I wanted to make sure I was actually doing that, I could practice by actually sitting down on something like that. And then I know I'm actually sitting low enough and I'm really sticking my booty way out. You could double fall, please. That will make it harder. So if you don't have any weight, you might want to consider double halting. Let's rest. Now, again, I did work my core over here a bit, but I could actually specifically work my core now by doing some trunk rotations or more controlled version, circles with the band. For a little short one, I will show you all of them. So you can do these one sided or alternating side. If you're short on time, maybe you alternate side. All right, so full rotation is an option. Notice my hips are moving. Now, if that does not feel good on my back, I might really slow it down, control short little range of motion. Other options, circles. You could mix it up. Idea is to really just feel the core muscle working. Let's turn it to the other side. Again, full rotation is an option. Little ones. Or circles. And circles like the face of a clock, or circles like you're stirring a pot of soup. Rest. So I'm going to repeat those all again. So go ahead and join me. We're rowing. And I'll just remind you again go ahead and start. You can pull straight back, palms facing the bar. You could go palms down. You could even add a squat if you wanted to be. Or again, that step back. But definitely keep the row because that is something that is our base. For this exercise, you can alternate your arms. Keep going for about five more seconds. Squeeze the shoulder blades and rest. That's our pulling exercise. We're gonna push, chest press. We're pushing away. Press or push. And I can take this lunge stride. If I wanted to make it more dynamic, you know you could add some movement. Again, that's adding in some 
squatting slash lunging. You can just keep it basic and do the press. I'm now involving my core again. Rotating in my body a little bit. So my core is involved. But again, you can keep it super basic. And just do the press. Reps. All right, we are back to our squat. So dumbbell, kettlebell, or no weights, that's okay. Just do your best to challenge yourself. Begin. Now if you don't have the weight again, sometimes doing that double pulse is a good choice. Stick your booty way out. Core is tight. Chest stays lifted. So be careful you don't start to round as you try to get closer to the ground, perhaps. And sometimes when you get tired, that can happen. So chest lifting. Shoulders back. Weight in the heels. And again, you don't have to double pulse if you don't want or it's not serving you. Rest. Okay. We are back to some core work. Option, full rotation, little ones, circles, or you mix it up. So again, full rotation. That's a choice you can make if that feels okay in your back. Benefits of full rotation. Heart rate goes up, more cardio. Then you're working the whole body, so it's kind of a full body exercise. You know, cons, it does require you to have quite a bit of lumbar stability going on. And if your lumbar is not as stable as it needs to be, your body may not like it. So we might go little ones, or again, those circles. And that's going to help you with your lumbar stability. And let's rest and turn around. And speaking of lumbar stability, it is actually the lumbar, the lower back, supposed to be stable. I know many of us say, oh, my back is so tight, I need to stretch it. It needs to be more mobile. Well, the truth of the matter is, and again, little ones if you like, a lot of us have created an unstable environment in our lumbar spine, maybe because we don't have the core strength, or maybe because we thought we needed to really do a lot of twisting type stuff to stretch our back, because at the moment it feels good. But the body actually wants to be stable in that part of your body, lumbar, lower back. And so what happens is when you overstretch it, it tightens down because it keeps trying to stay stable. Lumbar, the most stable part of your spine should be. Middle back, thoracic, the, the next level of mobility. So you should have the more mobility in the middle back. And then the neck should have the most mobility. And yet, oftentimes, you stretch the lower back thinking that's the answer. And actually, you're just doing a disservice to yourself. Let's go back to the road. Squeeze the shoulder blades. Chest is lifting. So again, think stable lumbar spine. Mobile, more mobile for sure. Middle back. And then the neck should have some mobility as well. So if you think about the way that the body works. It alternates between mobile and stable joints. Keep going. Again, you might alternate. So the ankles, they should be mobile. The knees, they should actually be stable. The hips, mobile. The low back, stable. The middle back, mobile. The shoulders, Stable, I know, seems weird, but <laughs> neck mobile, and that's how it should go. Alternating mobile, jo mobile joint to stable joint. All right, so back to the press. I know, so what most of us think is, oh, my lower back needs to be more mobile, not stable, mobile, because it feels tight. That's not the way it was designed. 
shoulders they should be normal well, too because they feel so tight and they tighten up because of our postural or lack of postural alignment so what happens i just switched my feet because we're about halfway so what happens is they lock down on us to protect us our bodies are smart so we keep putting our bodies in yucky position sitting isn't that attractive at a desk like this everything around us the body tries to get us back into alignment so things lock down to protect us so that's why we end up in these positions in these situations in our body where we are uncomfortable in pain the postural alignment that is the key to a happy healthy body dealt with with exercise and double pulsing again it can be dealt with with myofascial release it can be dealt with with breath work yes breath work you can actually do posture correction with some stretching as well of my trunk. So that comes back to my lumbar. I'm not trying to twist in my lumbar. What would not be good is I'm holding my hip still and I'm doing a big rotation around myself. Notice if I'm doing the big rotation, my hips are moving because that is the powerhouse. Yes, core is involved. That's where the power came from, but also from my hips. If I try to do this big movement and keep my spine still, I'm gonna have problems with my back later. So if you're doing the big range of motion, move your hips. Okay, and again, if you're not, we can do these little ones or the circles. This is fine. I'm not asking for rotation in my lower back here. I'm actually asking for stability in the core and the lumbar. my last set of the core work for these exercises. So I pull, I pushed, I did some squatting, and now I'm doing my core. Let's do the other side. Again, I'm doing the full range. I am rotating through my feet, through my hips. Back doesn't like that. I do the little ones. I do some circles. all the time really paying attention to my core so I do not start to take this into parts of my body it doesn't belong and we rest all right guys please grab some water that's an important part of your workout too water if you don't hydrate your muscles will not work right for you all right so, what are we gonna do next? We can do another pulling exercise. So I could use a TRX to do a rowing exercise as well. So it's very similar. Now, I'm not gonna do a full set of all of these, but I just wanna show you that if you don't have bands and you happen to have a suspension system, a TRX, palms facing my body, palms up, Palms down, options there. If I have the TRX, no bands, pressing, right? So it's the same thing. I did a pulling exercise, I did a pressing exercise. Okay, I could do some core work on here. And I could do my squatting type work on here. Two feet or one feet. Foot. <laughs> okay. So just know that's an option for you. All right, but I am going to move on and use some dumbbells. 
Um, actually, we're gonna use a kettlebell. So you can use a dumbbell, you can use a kettlebell, your choice, for a, another rowing type exercise. So, one arm row. Now, I'm going to choose uh, to do this on a bench. Now, most people set up their one arm row with a knee on the bench like this, and then they do their row. That's okay. But if I want to involve my core more, I'm going to straddle the bench or even come behind the bench. Now I'm less supported by things, so my knee was giving me some support on here. Now I'm almost like doing a plank-ish type thing. My core has to work here, especially as I hang some weight off my body. Now really check in. If your lower back says no way, you either need to drop the weight a little bit or Maybe it's just not for you. So if your knee is, your back is flared up, go ahead and put your knee on the bench for some more support, okay? So, first things first, check your posture. This is what the mirrors are for in the gym, guys. Not just to flex and pose and check out your hair and makeup. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and check our posture. So I don't wanna get around in position and start my rows here. For most of us, we really need to stick the booty out and lift the chest up. Now I'm still gonna draw the pit of my belly in right here. So I'm not gonna just let it hang out and stick my butt out. All right, so then we row, okay? So I'm gonna take my kettlebell, it could be a dumbbell, it does not have to be a kettlebell. And then I'm gonna pull elbow back. And we go elbow back, elbow back. And notice I'm not pulling by my shoulder, I'm actually driving my elbow more back towards my hip. And all the while I'm feeling my core muscles working too to stabilize me here. Okay, so I'm gonna turn around and of course I'm gonna check my posture before I start to make sure I'm not hunched or doing anything that's going to jeopardize my body. Elbow drive straight back. Core tight. So that was a pulling exercise. Now a pushing exercise could very well be a chest press on this bench with a dumbbell or dumbbells, or I'm gonna do a flat. So that's still considered a pulling exercise. So I'm going to take two dumbbells and do a fly on here. So I recommend if you're doing chest presses, flies, barbell presses, feet up. If your feet are down, you have to be pretty tall, so see how the space behind my back, don't let that happen, okay? So a lot of people cheat and use their back by arching their back to press the weight up. You are asking for trouble. So core tight, I don't create a big arch in my back, to help me bring these up, whether I'm doing a fly or a barbell press. So if you want to take care of your body, don't worry about how much weight you're pressing on. Don't worry about it. Worry about, don't even worry. Just focus on how does my body feel? What am I feeling? So a lot of times people zone out when they're doing their workout. I'm asking you not to. So I am trying to work my chest and shoulders here. I'm not trying to work my lower back. Okay? I'm definitely not trying to go so deep that I'm straining anything inside of my shoulder. So I am focusing on how far am I going down. Only to a point where I can still see my hands and my peripheral vision. Now, if you do not have enough weight at home, if you're doing these at home, you could double pulse. So pulse 
Pulse. Press it up. Pulse. Pulse. Press it up. So again, this is my pushing. So we did pulling, which is the rows. And now I'm pushing, pressing, whatever you want to call it. Exercise. And rest. All right. So moving on to a squatting or lunging type exercise, I'm going to use this bench and do a Bulgarian split squat. If you don't have anything to put your foot up on or if you just irritate your knee or something, just do a basic split squat. So a basic split squat looks like this. Okay. Now, if any of you do not have the ability to do that, I'm going to show you real quick. Single-legged bridges, great choice here. Driving through the heel to put this on the floor. You want to feel this is mostly glute and hamstring. That's true whichever exercise you're doing. Okay, so you do one side and then the other side. So that's an option for you. And again, if you're doing stationary split squat lunge type thing, it will look like that. And after putting your toe up on the bench, almost no weight on that toe. And I'm driving through this front heel the same way that I would be if I was on the floor doing the bridging. Front heel driving down. So mostly my glute and my hamstring are doing the work. So you can go for time and you can just stay with me and follow along and go for time. It ends up being, depending on the exercise, 30 to 45 seconds. Go ahead and switch. Or you can go for rest. So typically, unless you're doing bodybuilding, like trying to get really bulky, that's a choice, you're going for maybe 12-ish reps. Now don't just stop at 12, because I said 12-ish. <laughs> you really want to get to a fatigue point with good form. So if my form starts to suffer, I start to slouch, or my knee starts doing weird things, then of course, I need to stop because it's not worth pushing one more rep with bad form. You'll hurt yourself and you will suffer because then you don't get to work out again. You'll have to recover for days or weeks. All right, rest. So, core. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the bench to do some core work here. Lower abdominal. Now I'm going to grab the top of this bench. My feet are going to go towards the ceiling. You do not have to move very much at all. Just enough to feel the lower core working. Maybe I need to keep my knees bent to keep my lower back out of it. Now carefully you're not uh, yanking with your arms. It's a controlled movement. Now if I need more, I could do a little bit of a lowering of the legs and then a lift. But you notice I'm not swinging at all. The other option is to add some rotation. And that could be done with knees bent as well. In fact, for some of us, knees bent is going to make the back happier. And rest. Okay, we are back to that one arm row. So go ahead and grab your kettlebell or your dumbbell. Check your form and we'll go. So good posture, core tight. Now, if this is, again, if you at home, maybe you don't have enough weight, you could double pulse. That's keeping the form, so if I, if I make that suggestion and now you do it and all of a sudden your form goes, just go back to regular reps. You'll thank me later. <laughs> it's better to do just enough than to overdo it and then suffer the consequences. 
I know our society is all about if some is good, rest, more is better. But guess what? That's why most of us are stressed out. That's <laughs> why most of us have some type of an injury. Here we go. Core tight. Here we are double pulse. Anytime something does not feel challenging enough for you, you could double pulse it. That's pretty much any exercise. So if you're at home right now, you don't have access to the kinds of weight that you want to use, go ahead and rest. Then just double pulse those exercises. Go ahead and move on to your flies. And again, feet up. Or even knees up, and that requires me to use my core even more, but it also helps my back. If my knees are up, I have to balance on this bench. Now again, don't forget, you can double pulse these. And the other option, which I haven't mentioned yet, is to go Super slow. So you're going slow against gravity. That makes it much harder. The double pulsing does something similar, but if double pulsing doesn't make sense to you, just slow it down. Okay, let's rest. So we are moving back to our split squats. So remember, you can do the lunge at the bridge on the floor. You can do a stationary lunge if you don't have something to put your foot up on or if your knees don't like the toe up version of this exercise. All right, here we go. I could double pulse these. Now I am watching in the camera that my knee is staying right in line with my toes. You might be in front of a mirror, that would be great. So you can make sure your knees aren't doing anything like that. It's a great way to ouchie hurt your knee. Get your butt out, chest hinges just slightly forward, but it's lifted. I'm not gonna round my spine. Go ahead and switch sides. Again, up and down, or perhaps double pulsing. Watching my knee, it's tracking right in line with my ankle and toes, and rest. Okay. So, you can do those lower abs like we did last time, or you can do something like I'm going to show now. It's a V up, okay? These are kind of advanced, so don't worry if there's something that you can't do today. You can work your way up to it. It can be done on a bench. It can be done on the floor. So, if it's done on a bench, you can hang on the bench and just kind of do this long extended crunch up. If the knees stay bent, that's challenging enough. You could do it with one leg, the other leg. Now, if the legs are straight, much harder if your lower back does not like that. Please don't do it. Option to do these on the floor. Of course, the flies and the rows, you don't need a bench. You can use a chair to support yourself on your rows. So don't just disregard these exercises if you don't have a bench. You could use a chair for your rows, which I don't have right here, but again, that, that's just a chair, just a bench chair. Or you can use your own body and then do your row. In fact, I will go ahead and do that this time. Just so you know, you don't get out of the exercise just because you don't have a bench. <laughs> All right, so hand on thigh, everything is still the same. Now, the bonus of this is, guess what? 
I like to get to work too. My core gets to work even more because it's supporting me now. I'm supported only by my own body. All right, here we go. And we work. This is actually quite a bit harder because my whole body is involved. Double pulse. Maybe I just double pulse the last few. Rest. All right, let's turn it around. Hand on thigh, checking my posture, really important. And then we go into a row. I can bring my elbow down as long as I'm not rounding my spine. Core tight. My chest is lifted to keep that neutral spine. Maybe I double pulse. Rest. All right, guys. So, maybe you don't have a bench. You can still do these slides. And in fact, cool bonus, you could do them on the floor lift your hips up so now guess what i am working my core and my legs and my glutes also i upped my weight here because i wasn't getting quite enough but i might still Choose to double pulse these only if I'm feeling like I need the challenge and I can still keep my good form. And again, super slow is an option. Rest. All right. So. We are back to the leg work, the squatting part of our set. And again, don't forget, single legged bridges are a fantastic option. Or you can do your lunge or your stagger stance, split squat, toe up or not. Here we go, down and up. So I'm gonna double pull some of these. And then for my last few, and this could be done with, with both feet on the floor as well, I'm going to set the weights down and I'm going to hop. Extra bonus. <laughs> so, right about that. A few seconds to the end. So, I'm going to hop. And we rest. That is not easy. Okay, let's do the other side. Here we go. And again, I might double pulse. And then as I get to my last few, I might set the weight down. Or not. I like to swing my arms to get myself elevated up higher. Rest. All right, so back to core. I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to do half the time with more of that lower abdominal isolation and then half the time with the V sort of ways. So again, if I'm on a bench here, just a quick, if you're on the floor, I'm just going to be here, so I'll just stay here with you. Go ahead and begin if you haven't already. And it's just, notice I'm not rolling way towards my face. Okay, so I'm definitely more upright with my hips. Maybe I had a little more. Maybe I had a rotation. All right, and move on to those V ups. Maybe it's just one leg. 
try it. See if your body likes one leg better. Rest. All right, guys. So we are moving on. We're going to do one more round of exercises that, again, has four different exercises. Pushing, pulling, squatting, core work, then we'll stretch and be done. Now, this particular workout, because I'm doing a lot of explaining, is ending up being longer than an hour. But you should be able to make it through a warm up the workout and stretching in an hour. You need to break it up and just do like one of these sets of exercises, one of these sets of four exercises, and then another day do the other ones. No problem. You just do that. So we're going to be pulling again. So any kind of pulling, so that could be bicep curls, anything pulling towards your body is considered a pulling exercise. So we're going to go ahead and do, um, believe it or not, rear delts. So it's a lifting exercise. We're going to go ahead and do that one. So that is with two dumbbells, potentially. It could also be done with bands. Okay, so we're here, and I like to go palms forward. Now, if you did not have a any dumbbells, you could do this with um, a one band and pull here, so stepping on the band. If you've got a band attached to the wall, you could do this one side at a time. It's a little difficult to do the palms forward unless you actually grab the band itself. Okay, so this is an option. So you take that option that works for you. So we're going to go ahead and do here rear delts. So one of the things you might notice is with my upper body particularly, I went from you know larger muscles to now I'm working some smaller muscles. Now when it comes back to the leg work, of course those are just big muscles, <laughs> that's the way it goes. So if these are too easy, you could double pulse. So the concept of that is that if I work the larger muscles first, and then I work the smaller muscles. I'll still hopefully have the energy to work these smaller muscles. They don't take as much energy to use. So obviously, I shouldn't say obviously, but you might notice if I'm hinged forward on these, of course the whole backside of my body has to work as well. So it's not just rear delts. It's not just back of the shoulders working. My lower back, my glutes, my hamstrings are also working. So pay attention to that. Keep everything tight. If your back gets tired, you just come up and you rest and then you start again when you can. So pressing. So we're going to be doing, I call them skull pressures. So it's going to be again on your bench. I'll do it this time and then I'll also demonstrate on the wall. So right next to my temples, working the backs of my arms now. Squeezing up every time. Squeeze. And squeeze. And again, I can bring my knees up. If I got tired, I could alternate my arms. And if I needed more, don't forget, double pulse. Rest. All right. So we're going to be using the ball now. And I think next time I'll transition to the ball and put my bench away. So, backs of the legs, hamstring curls. So, this falls under the squatting category. So, hamstrings, hips lift, and we roll the ball in and out. Okay, now, if that does not feel okay on your knees, you might simply do a version where you keep the knees bent and lift up and down. Let's say you don't have a ball. Hips lift, and you walk the heels out and in. I'm going to spend some time, of course, leading with one leg and then some time with the other. So, not started yet. Start. You're doing it on the ball. Just keep going. Nice and slow. Hips stay super high. Hamstrings and glutes, guys. Hamstrings and glutes. Rest. All right. So, core. 
planking on the floor, on the ball, your choice, regardless, and tight extension. So think about that uh, puppy dog who's in trouble. So here's the puppy dog. Here's the, oh, I'm in trouble, a little tuck under. Now I do not recommend you spend your life walking around with your tail tucked. It actually is not a bad, it's actually not healthy for your spine, generally speaking, for the most of your time walking around like that. But anti-extension, now it's not like a harsh tuck, it's not ridiculously tuck, but a little tuck under will give you support when you do these planking maneuvers. So let's come here. So here's me not doing anti-extension. Here's me doing anti-extension. Notice I'm not ridiculously tucked under. So don't, so your puppy dog is not in that much trouble. Just a little bit, how's that? <laughs> so we hold, maybe on the floor. I might add something like a tap out if it's too easy for me. Maybe holding is enough. If it's too much, come to your knees. I'm still in a plank though. I'm not sticking my butt out. I'm really keeping my spine long. My neck is neutral, I'm not dunking it down. And I'm driving my elbows into the ground, almost like I'm trying to pull my body forward. So you can see I even shifted when I drove those elbows in a little bit more. And that will fire up the core. Rest. All right. So we're back to our rear deltoid exercise. So again, hinge forward. Maybe with your dumbbells, again, if you don't have dumbbells, you can use a band. Just put one foot on that band and then lift it up. So that's a TheraBand usually. Or your one band connected to the wall. You'll probably do one side at a time. So go ahead and join me if you haven't already. Option to double pulse. If it's too easy, double pulse these. Now, one thing you may or may not have noticed, I'm going chest level. I'm going to set these down because I don't want to hurt myself. I am not going way up here. That's a trapezius exercise. Your traps are up here. We're trying to get the back of the shoulder. So, chest level only. That starts fatigue. Always an option to alternate. Or sometimes just doing one side at a time will feel better on the, knee, on the neck. Okay, my back is tired. I rest. And then start again when I can. Keep going. Rest. All right, guys, so we are going to move on once again to our skull crushers, and I'm going to show you on the ball this time. So anytime you come onto the ball, there's an element of instability. The core and the glutes get to work more. Lucky core and glutes right next to the temple. Elbows going towards the ceiling. Easy, I double pulse. Too hard, I alternate. Or maybe I need to go down and wait or take a little break and start again when I've recovered a bit. No problem, do not push past anything sharp. Do not push past bad form, not worth it, guys. You can hear me say that over and over again. I can't even begin to tell you how many people come to me I also have a post rehab certification and orthopedic exercise specialist certification. How many people come to me rest, by the way, because they've injured themselves exercising, and that's not the point, of course. All right, so we're back on the floor, legs working. Let's go hamstring curls or bridges. And remember, you can do that walk out. Notice my hips stay high. Now this was way too easy for you guys. You could do this with one leg. That's at least twice as hard. Be careful if you choose that. Switch sides if you're doing one leg. anti-extension. I'm going to do it on the ball this time. So I'm not here. Just, just a little. 
and then maybe I roll, maybe I make circles. And again, you can be on the floor with these, you can be on your knees, you can be on an elevated surface. Keep going and I will show you what I mean. So I can absolutely bring myself to my bench or chair. This might make it accessible to me where it's not on the floor. Maybe I can't do the full plank, but my knees don't like being on the floor for the modified version. This is a great option. I can still do some tap out. I'm still driving my elbows down towards my body. Firing up the core. Rest. All right, you guys, one more time. So let's go ahead and do those rear delts one last time. Rear delts, back of the shoulder. Okay, so not lifting too high. Working these guys. All right, here. Too easy. I double pulse. My core is tight. Try to my feet parallel. Does it felt better to come into sort of a lunge stride? That's an option too. So how does it feel best? for me in the rest of my body. So I'm starting to strain my low back by being here. Maybe a lunge stride would feel better. And if none of that does, you could do a one-sided supported version on your bench, even fully supported with the knee. Maybe your back is tired at this point. Okay, if you were doing one side, definitely switch and get evened out on the other side. rest. So I did the skull crushers on the bench, I did them on the ball. I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can also do them on the floor. Let's say you don't have a bench or a ball. Floor is an option. And of course, I always say, why not lift those hips up? Hamstrings and glutes get to work. You could even do a single-legged version with one leg up. Of course, halfway through, you switch. Remember, you can double pulse if these are too easy. Or alternate if you're starting to fatigue. Notice my elbows point straight up to the ceiling when I bend them. I'm not way back here. I'm not way down here. Right up over my shoulders. And we rest. Excellent. All right, so remember ball, hamstring curls, or those walkouts. Here we go. So do make sure if you're doing these walkouts that you lead with one leg for part of the time and then the other for the other part of the time, or you can alternate. I'm trying to keep my hips as still as possible. That's true whether I'm doing the ball hamstring curls or whether I'm doing this hamstring exercise. start to feel it in my low back. Maybe I don't step out as far. I definitely check in and make sure I'm drawing my core muscles in. Maybe I just need a break for a second and then start again. All right, that's our time. Last time, planking. All right, guys, so here we go. Plank. I'm gonna do it on the ball again, and I'm gonna move my legs this time. So, anti-extension. Flat in the spine, and I'm going to do a knee drive. So anytime you're in an unstable environment, it is harder, for sure. Be careful. We're almost there, guys. This is our last exercise in this group, and then I'm going to give you one little bonus that we're going to finish up with, and then we'll stretch. Rest. All right. So, our bonus. So, we have back extensions. So, I recommend you guys put your feet up against the wall for this one, but for my situation here, so I can stay in the camera, my feet are not against the wall. But I recommend feet against the wall or something so you feel more solid. You might have straight legs or slightly bent legs. So listen to your back on these. So back extension. 
put the pit of the belly in. Now this is our basic version. We need less. Hands across the chest or shoulders. We need more. Arms come up. Basic, basic version of back extension on the ball. I'm going to show you how you can also do it on the floor. So of course, you can come here. Now on these, if you need less, arms go back. And if they need more, if you need more, arms can come forward. You'll notice it's not a big range of motion. Go ahead and rest. I'm not trying to bend my body completely in half. I'm trying to lengthen the spine. All right, guys. That is our routine for the day. We're going to go ahead and stretch. So we're going to get the hamstrings by putting a foot up on something. If you have an elevated surface, go ahead and throw your foot up on it. If you don't, foot right here on the floor is fine. Now, here's the thing about your hamstrings. Most people think, oh, I'm going to reach down and reach for my toe. That's not a hamstring stretch. That's a lower, lower back stretch. We're not trying to stretch the lower back right now. Hips square to that extended leg. Tall in my spine, my standing leg will bend, chest lifted. I got a little bend in my knee. So at first, I'm going to keep the toes kind of pulled back. They don't have to be aggressively pulled back. I'm going to pull back a bit. And if I'm on the floor, and the same thing here. I'm not rounding, chest lifting. So these are those isometric stretches I was telling you about that you do after your exercise. Now, let the toe point away a bit. And again, it doesn't have to be an aggressive point, but it's definitely not pulled back anymore. You might be able to move a little deeper, or it will definitely change what you feel in that hamstring. Same thing if you're right here on the floor. So I was here, now I'm here. Long in my spine. All right, let's do the other side. A little bit pulled back, my knee is soft. Long through my spine and I hinge forward. A lot of times people turn away from the stretch. If you need to do that, maybe don't go as deep. If I turn away, it's not a hamstring stretch anymore. Towards the extended leg. Toes just slightly pulled back. And again, it will look like this if you're on the floor. And again, toe points away a little bit. And then I come back in. Or it will just come down towards the ground. And relax. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get the inner thighs. So turn your body sideways to your elevated surface. Standing leg is bent. And then, again, toes are just up a bit. They don't have to be aggressively pulled back, but they're it's not getting sloppy over there. And then I just lean forward. You can do something similar out on the floor. If you have something to put your foot up on, it definitely is recommended. I feel this much more, and you probably will too. It doesn't even have to be this high. It could be just a step. Inner thigh working, stretching right here. All right, so let's do the other side. Toe up. Okay, so it's not here. So it's basically pointed towards the ceiling. Standing leg bend. And again, it's not going to be aggressively pulled back, but it's not going to be sloppy and going over here. You'll feel this much more if you keep that toe up and keep the knee and toe and hip all in the same plane. All right, rest. So moving on to a hip flexor stretch. So that's going to be right in here. So I'm going to show you from a few different angles. So first of all, try stepping to my left foot forward. My right foot's a little out to the right and back. Turn this way so you can see also. Now from here, I mentioned this before. Now this is the puppy dog in trouble tuck under. So it's a little bit more of a tuck than we were doing in our plank. You might already feel something here, okay? Squeeze your right butt cheek. So it's my right leg back. I'm going to lunge in a little bit with my left leg. I might hold on to something over here, okay, if I need balance. Now lift your right arm up. Turn your right chest to the right a bit. 
and then just a little lean to the left. Right through here, even up into where the hip flexor connects into my torso. So all these isometric stretches, they're telling me my about telling my body, my neurological system, my mind, everything that I'm done. So you do these after. Now, if you want to do them before, that's fine, but you must still go through the dynamic warm-up to tell your body you're going to be working then. So if you feel like you want to stretch isometrically before, no problem. Just then do the dynamic warm-up, all this stuff, and then go to do your workout. All right, so left foot is back. And remember, it's not straight behind, it's a little off to the side. Okay, so a little bit off to the left. I tuck under, okay, squeeze my left glute, bring my right knee out a little bit, left arm reaches. Left chest spins a little bit to the left, I might be holding on to something over here. Lean a bit to the right. All of this. For some reason, your arm extended doesn't work. You could bend your elbow. And if it still doesn't work, you're still getting something, even if you don't actually reach the arm up. You can still turn and lean a bit. But you'll feel a lot if you reach that arm up. All right, go ahead and rest. So we're going to repeat the one we did with the warm-up. So this is the chest stretch. When we did this before, we did sort of a, you know, a decently paced neck roll. But this time, we'll hold. So we'll take the ear to the shoulder, and we'll actually stay this time. Maybe we're going to roll just slightly past so I get my scalenes in the front of my neck. And then chin to chest, and we'll stay this time. And then ear to shoulder, and maybe just slightly past, not to the point where I feel any pinching in the back. Scalings on the front side here. Last stretch, triceps. Bend your elbow, so I'm grabbing my left elbow, and then I'm going to lean a little to the right. So there you have it. We had rolling, myofascial release in the beginning. We did a dynamic warm-up. Then we did three rounds of four exercises. Pulling, pushing, something with the legs. I call it squatting or some people call it even carrying. So anything where you're carrying something heavy and you're moving or squatting with it. And then four. And now we're doing our stretches. So that is your full workout. And again, that should take you about an hour, maybe a little bit more. Just working through, take your time. If you need to pause and start again later, if you don't have time for the full thing, no problem. Just do what you can, come back to it later. It'll be here for you, right? So it's recorded. It's here for you. You can always come back. Have a great day, guys.